<laughs> okay, welcome, David Henry. Thank you for joining us on 80s Movie Guide. I'm Riley Roberts. I'm Tara McNamara, and we're so excited to see this movie because um, after watching your feature directing debut, This Is the Year, we noticed that maybe maybe we might share a common point of view that we love 80s movies, <laughs> but they set into motion some uh, perceptions that are not necessarily helpful when it comes to dating. So we wanted to find out from you, why did you decide to reimagine an 80s movie with today's sensibilities? It's a, it's a great question. Um, yes, first of all, I'm a huge 80s fan. I grew up loving John Hughes, um, Breakfast Club 16, Tan Candles Pretty in Pink. I mean, uh, the list is kind of wonderful, although he didn't direct that one, but he um, was involved. Um, wrote yeah, it. I, I'm just, it. yeah, wrote <laughs> it. Um, Howie Deutsch. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan. And I wanted to bring back that kind of nostalgic, classic, cinematic feel to the teen genre yet again, but I wanted to update it. So one of the things that Selena Gomez uh, fell in love with in the film is that we do things that a lot of 80 mo 80s movies didn't do, like we give the female characters arcs. <laughs> um, a, lot of, a lot of female characters in the 80s were kind of used and abused by guys and they were saved by a guy and they were catty with their friends. And we do the opposite of all of that. We purposely wanted to flip those tropes on its head, show authentic female friendship. The two girls in the film actually help one another and give each other the data points that they need to become the best versions of themselves. And uh, the, the pretty girl, quote unquote, hot girl, um, is really deep and has a great arc and starts in one place and ends in a different place. And you can't judge a book by its cover. And girls are never one note. And we wanted that character to have something deep and meaningful. And uh, Selena really related to that, loved that. And I got to tilt my hat to our female writer, Sienna Aquilini, who was my partner on it, my writing partner. And um, that was very much a goal of hers. And uh, yeah, so we kind of wanted to take the classic cinematic warm feeling of the 80s and just update it and update the plot points um, in, a, in a kind of new way. But at the end of the day, give you a feel good movie because I think the world's just so crazy and divided and oh, right now and we won't feel good. So hopefully this is a movie that can make people smile. Yeah, and it definitely did. <laughs> um, and the film is also full of Easter eggs. So which 80s movies are your favorite in particular and how did you decide which ones you were gonna reference in the film? Well, you know, Rob Lowe was a huge 80s star, right? So my character in the film was very much modeled after just him. So <laughs> I, 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 it's the movie slipping my head right now, but he had certain earrings in- oh, St. Elmo's Fire. St. Elmo's Fire. That's yep. it. Yeah, you know it. See, you know your movies. <laughs> and um, we kind of modeled the earrings after him and the hair and like, we very much wanted to kind of tilt our hat to, to him in the film. Um, and, and, and one of the fun things in the film is that they're watching and, you know, they're watching a movie in a movie kind of a thing. And so we got to do all the fun 80s ballads and, you know, scores and fun guitar, electric guitar riffs. And so from score to what we're actually putting on screen, we just got to have a, a lot of fun. It was definitely a, a sandbox to explore all of our 80s references. Um, I love yeah. the, footloose, the footloose feet. That was... <laughs> Those feet that come in there, absolutely, yeah. That was the that was a big one, and and the big hair, and all of it was was just a, an absolute blast. Well, since you mentioned John Hughes uh, as being an influence, of course, he wrote Planes, Trains, and Automobiles based on his own experience, and thought I've got to get this in here. And I thought because you wrote and directed and acted in this, that this story in particular might mean something special to you. So, where did the story come from? Yeah, it's a great point. It, it does come from somewhere special. Um, we would always do road trips to, to Coachella and me and my friends would, would, would go there all the time and just countless stories and things always went wrong on the road. And <laughs> that was kind of the, the inspiration to the story. And then, and then a theme started to emerge of like love and how love is a lot of times not portrayed as something sacrificial. And I kind of wanted to see love through different lenses, love through friends, love through brothers, love through family, um, romantic love, and kind of incorporate a sacrificial angle to all of it. Each character has to give something up in this film to kind of grow. Um, and that that's the other thing that really means something to me, and that's expectation versus reality. I feel like our generation is inundated with mo social media, TV shows, movies, and you expect your life to go a certain way, 
and that's not always the case and 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 that's not always the reality and and reality is beautiful and it shouldn't be knocked for not being beautiful so those are the kind of themes and moments of inspiration that we really wanted to chew on in this film um and and push to the forefront so yeah that that that's kind of it um well how did it feel taking on so much responsibility <laughs> if you're doing all of this work for this one movie you know i was i was so blessed to grow up uh you know successful child actor so from the time i was very little i was you know when i was eight or nine like you got your start when you were eight you said mm -hmm. um i was asking questions, meeting people, building relationships, keeping in contact with folks, being mentored by really smart, successful producers and comedians, asking them like, why, why did this joke work like that? You know, deconstruct the joke for me. Or why are you putting the camera here? Why not here? Oh, you're trying to create some sort of emotional impact. And that's why you're putting your camera in a specific spot, um, higher or lower, like why high, why low? What does all that mean? So I would just always ask lots of questions. And so I took all these mental notes and I really wanted to bring all the good things I learned. And, and I learned from folks that I had bad experiences with too. So I wanted to bring all that to set and um, and uh, unlock that and, and and create that atmosphere. And you know, thankfully it really was a really productive and um, encouraging atmosphere. I think one of the things that it's particularly exciting, especially to uh, Riley's generation, is seeing your name and Selena Gomez's name together. <laughs> Back so, at it again. <laughs> <laughs> how did so? How did this happen? Is there more that's going to be happening? So, like, so Selena is a very good friend of mine. Still, still like my little sister. Um, she'd known about this movie for a long time because we're oftentimes checking in with each other, getting dinners, and she's good friends with my wife now. So we're we're like family. Um, she knew about the script. She knew about the story. It was always super encouraging. There's nothing ever formal. It was more, I know about the, what she's doing in her life. She knows what I'm doing in my life. It's just how friends talk. We know what projects are in our atmospheres, but it was never like, we're gonna work together on this because we both just like really, you know, love one another. So we don't expect anything from each other professionally. Um, so she always knew about it. She was always giving me notes and encouragement and thoughts. And then when I finished the film, showed it to her, she was like bawling by the end of it and was like, there's a lot of teen movies out there that aren't positive and empowering for especially women and, and for the younger generation, it's just not out there. She's like, I wanna help get this message out there. So it, it was an organic partnership in that sense because we both were in line with trying to get this message out. And it just, she's like, well, I'm, I'm producing it now. So. Um, it, it, it worked out really, really well. And uh, yeah, we, we don't have anything else planned at this point in time. No wizard um, reboot, no reunion or anything like that? I think both her and I are super open to it, um, but a lot of other things have to fall in place for that to happen. But um, I think we're, we're both, you know, open to the idea, but uh, it's just, there's, there's so much going on in life and, you know. Right, and she's busy right now. I saw she's doing a show right now too, so that's probably <laughs> not, <laughs> not on her radar. Um, but I did notice, obviously, a, a lot of familiar faces uh, from people all over Disney Channel. So can you tell me how like the cast kind of came together and how you decided? Absolutely. Like I love, I love hiring former child actors, and I love hiring Disney Channel actors because you're so trained to uh, be professional and perform and perform on time. Um, and that's a big deal when you're making an indie film, you know, when you're making an indie film, the enemy is time. You have to get, get what you need in like one or two takes. So I was very open to hiring Disney people or Nickelodeon people or just TV actors in general, because you're so trained to doing, uh, to giving a good performance and giving it on time. And because I grew up with so many great actors, my first thought was to cast people that I knew were awesome, that I had a shorthand with rapport with, and that could give me what I wanted very quickly. So I instantly reached out to Jeff Garland to play the mentor character, who's mm -hmm. just such a pro and was so you know great in the role. Mm -hmm. Reached out to Greg Sulkin, who's a good friend of mine to play Kale, because he's just perfect for it. And oh, it was a- I think his British accent was made for this role. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Um, it's a different role for him because he actually plays a lot of American characters and he doesn't do a ton of comedy. so. I, I, this was a, a sandbox for him and that's what it was designed for from day one to be like, Greg, you can just, you know, you're spread your wings and have fun, man. Let out your inner Russell brand, like just 
be fun, funny, cheeky, British, just how you are in you know real life. He's a funny guy, and um, so he 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 nailed it. And then you know Jake Short and Vanessa Morano, I didn't know them very well, but we had a tons of mutual friends, and so they came in and auditioned for the role and nailed it. Um, and then of course my brother playing the lead. Yeah. Um, he just came off of Fear the Walking Dead, very different show, but he was. <laughs> Yeah, no, no zombies dying in this, but um, he was available and him and I have such a shorthand that I knew he could pull off a performance very quickly. And again, time is everything um, in yeah. an independent film. So it was wonderful to work with him and create a family atmosphere on set. Everyone felt very empowered to be the best they could. But uh, the final question for you is that I was wondering when you, when you watch the film back, what is the one scene that just is your favorite, whether something happened behind the scenes or when you wrote it, something meaning it, it just meant something to you uh, in particular? The, the ending, the very end, um, I don't want to ruin it for everyone, but it's, it's, it was designed to feel magical and just make you have like a yeah, moment, you know, and uh, um, it, 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 it works. And um, I'm, I'm very happy with that moment. And there was a lot of craziness going on to get it. And, we almost didn't get it. It was right down to the wire and we got it. So I, I know the story behind it was like, we're running out of time. No way, we're not gonna get it. Hurry, roll, no, get it, get it, hurry, run, just try. Like, and we nailed it. Steady cam operator just nailed the shot. We had it in one take and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like we, the one thing we needed for the movie to work, right? This one shot. And um, yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the scene. Well, thank you. We love the movie and good luck with the release. And we really appreciate your time today. Y'all yeah. are the absolute best. So thank you so much. And by the way, you two are the example of what I hope happens this weekend and, and continuing forward. Um, are you guys related by chance? <laughs> yeah, it's I'm my mom. <laughs> okay, mom. Okay, I, was, I didn't want to presume if you're a sister, but um, yeah, I was going to say a mom and a daughter, dad and a son, mix match them all. Like that's the hope here is that a teen or a preteen can grab their parents and it's a movie you can watch together where you don't feel like as a parent you got to be like you know oh, wow this is awkward to watch together like hopefully it's something you can both be like having fun together so um I, yeah, this and even, was special for me so thank even you my little brother like i have an 11 year old brother even he loved it he, he was, loved it yeah and he loved it and i do really appreciate that because um i know a lot of parents are like, oh, I want to show this. I'm going to show this breakfast club to my child who's in fourth grade. And I'm like, you shouldn't do that, <laughs> you know? And so- uh, we, And all sorts of things and this and that. And you're like, yeah, that's, that, that's tough. So this purposefully was something that could bring the family together, especially in these crazy times. So yeah. All right, that's thanks. awesome. Y'all are the best. Thank you so much. Special interview for me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Care.